Hey, hello people. So, we are back. And in the last video, um, in case you missed it, I see why am I, in case you missed it, um, we were talking about potential foam and how we actually do the all run and view it by default. So, again, problem is after you run the all run script in uh, potential foam, you run the all run script here, and what you realize is that, huh, I can't really view anything because, uh, well, the there's no velocity to, to select from, so you can't see the velocity profile. And all you have to do is just skip the time, skip the zero directory, and there you go. Uncheck the skip zero time thing, and you will be able to see the velocity profile. And you can see the UX, UY, and UZ. And you can uh, use the glyph. You can use uh, the glyph filter. All right, and that will tell you. Maybe you scale it down like this. And that will tell you all the uh, what do you call that? It will tell you all the uh, the direction of the flow. Maybe you make it a bit bigger, and there you go. You'll be able to see the flow direction, and yeah, it will be colored. I'll just give you a solid color. Otherwise, you can use P, the pressure. Apparently, the in this uh, in this coloring scheme, there is no color by velocity, though that'll be very useful. And then, yeah. So let's just recap of how to view this potential from uh, in the case directory. All right. And now, uh, yeah. Question is, uh, how do you apply this to the snappy piped up foam? Uh, snappy pipe uh, open phone case file yeah Ted yeah, you can call me Ted uh, Ted how are you going to do all this uh, um, importing uh, importing of this into the the uh, case files so I'm going to so I'm going to the thin pipe flow snappy X mesh so what I've done is um, um, I've just copied the snappy pipe uh, folder into two extra folders. One is called snappy pipe experiment. One is called snappy pipe potential form. So this snappy pipe experiment is just for me to fiddle around with the program and see what happens. Do my own experimenting. And this is snappy pipe potential form. So if you take a look, uh, I just do an all clean, right? Just do an all clean. I want to clean everything up because you want to start from scratch. So, and then I want to remove all the log files. So I'm going to put star dot log, and that will remove all these log files you see here. Okay, so we are just left with this. And remember, we separated the run file uh, into a mesh generation file as well, so that we can skip the, we can uh, differentiate these processes. All right, so now we want to run potential form in this directory. How are we going to do it? Well, normally, if we try and run potential form as is, we'll have this uh, fatal error thing. All right, you'll have this fatal error. And this is usually, uh, is it cannot find file points in the block mesh directory down to constant, meaning to say we need to run block mesh first. So what I'll do is just uh, I'll run the mesh generation. <coughs> I'll put the n file to run in the background. So, yep, I'll let it run. And then we can go and see, we can also check on the progress of our snappy pipe. Okay. So remember, we were running a very, very long uh, simulation. This is uh, 100,000 seconds. Uh, you see about two videos ago, on the last video, I can't remember which one it was. Yeah, in the previous videos, it was uh, we are running for hundreds of thousands of seconds, and I uh, just like to draw your attention to this one thing. Yep, uh, I think the right interval I made it such that is one times ten to the power of five, which is like that many time steps. Um, it basically means uh, one times ten to the power of five times of this delta t, which is twenty five seconds a piece. So it end so. 
When I finish running that simulation after oops, maybe hours of plus, a few hours or just over an hour, I can't remember already, uh, there was no data actually being locked down because uh, the write interval was too large. So I reduced the write interval to like 2 times 10 to the 3, or which basically 2,000 uh, times, uh, 2,000 of these uh, time steps, and that, uh, that enabled me uh, to, you know, get some decent, decent uh, level of, uh, you know, uh, resolution. So there's a fifty thousand, more sixty thousand seconds. This is about eleven hundred and ten thousand. And how do I calculate this? Well, simply, I'll have uh, five hundred thousand seconds, right? Because I want to. My end time is five hundred thousand seconds. I divide by twenty five. Uh, so if we were to have that, uh, we have 20,000 uh, time intervals. So it, the, the number has to be 20,000 or less in order to f for us to like, generate some data. So I put 2,000. So I just want about 10, 10 extra uh, data points. Then I can up I'll upload this to GitHub. Right? So that's, that's the news flash for that. All right, so let's see. Snappy pipe potential foam. Let's see where we are. So uh, it's running a snappy hex mesh now. All right. So remember, just now I was just uh, I was running this. Uh, what do you call that? Where was I? Uh, yeah, I was running potential foam. And we saw that it's uh, problematic. So I just run a mesh generation. I put this N sign here. Remember, this N sign means running in the background. If you're not sure, I'm telling you now, N sign means running in the background so that you can sort of uh, do other things while it's running. So, yeah, that's just a reminder, which I should have told you before. And let's take a look at snappyhacksmesh.log. And we see that, yeah, it's at doing some iterations. We'll let it do its thing. So while it's running, let's take a look at the potential foam. What's inside? Uh, how how is potential foam normally being run? So let's go to open foam files, and then uh, let's go to cylinder potential foam, and let's check out the all clean and all run files. So uh, in the all clean files, uh, we've probably seen this before. If not. Uh, um, yeah, this is the first time, okay? So normally, if you want to write our own all clean file, we have to copy and paste this entire thing, right? And here it says clean case 0. So let's take a look at uh, the all clean functions, all right? Uh, clean case, open phone, source code. So let's, let's take a look at what clean case is doing, right? Okay, clean function. Yes, so I will probably want to put this into the, into the. Uh, okay, I want to put this into the uh, description. Yeah, so this is the clean, clean. Uh, the source code for this cleaning, cleaning the files. So take a look. We see this thing called clean case. So what a, what does clean case do? Clean case does the clean time directories, post processing, dynamic code, and optimization. Uh, what what are all these? These are well, if you haven't done a, a code, this kind of code before, bash code. I'll I'll just run run you through some of these functions to help you understand what's going on here. So this clean case basically cleans everything, right? So it's cleaning the time directories. What does cleaning time directories do? Well, you can see uh. There's a, some while folder, so basically, that if you if you're not sure, you can recognize this rm dash rf. That means remove in the bash uh, in the bash uh, command line. So basically, uh, if you if you don't understand what the rest means, it just means that it's removing all the time directories using this rm dash rf, which is a delete. Again, clean dynamic code. It does an rm dash rf on all of this. The snappy files will probably mean, uh, yeah, 
if you did a snappy hex mesh, it will clean up everything. So you see all the poly mesh files are, are gone. Okay. And clean optimization, there's more RM than dash RF. Post processing as well. So clean case will just run everything of these. So this is a is a more elegant way of writing the code in uh, other than copy and pasting all these things which can be pretty messy. So it's gonna run all these. It's going to remove lots of things. Alright. So it removes, 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 removes. Alright. So this is just what uh, clean case is doing. But that's not clean case zero. What's clean case zero doing? Well, uh, clean case zero, what it's doing is that it runs clean case and then it just removes the zero directory. Yep. So this is what clean case zero means. Alright. So that's done. So why is there a zero dot original thing here? Well, if you notice uh, what potential foam does, it actually uh, goes into the zero directory and it uh, instead of uh, remember in the zero directory, oopsie. Yeah, let's. Oh, yeah, we can do this zero. Then we press U. Oh, forget it. CD zero, and then we see the U. We notice that our internal field has been. It's not uniform anymore. All right. It will be all these uh, points uh, with uh, x, y, and z vectors, so that that's a different u velocity for every point. All right. If you look at the original file, you look at the look at the uh, what do you call it? You look at the internal field. This is the original thing you put into the internal field. And what potential does potential form does is just to replace this with the uh, exact field. Uh, of velocity for us to start with. That's the initial condition. So every time you use potential form, all that this data disappears. This uh, the original internal field file disappears, and uh, yeah. So all these uh, zero files are being modified. Okay. So what uh, what this uh, I mean to run it properly. What uh, uh, this put, uh, all run file does, so we can go and take a look at the all, all run script inside this uh, directory to see what's going on. You see this basic uh, function; it just goes to. It's the same two lines. You don't really have to understand it, but instead of uh, clean functions, this is run functions now. It's a run function, and then the first thing it tells you is that it says, "Oh, I'm restoring this zero directory." So what's restore zero directory means? It basically means just, uh, I mean, you can kind of guess what it, logically what it means. It means to copy and paste from zero dot original to zero. All right, so restore zero directory open form. So this uh, let's let's find the uh, restore zero directory. So. So basically, it, it just copies and pastes the see? cp, cp, uh, yeah. There's a copy command for uh, get getting from the zero dot original to zero, and um, to an extent, if we just if we just uh, just run restore zero directory as is, what it will do is that it will overwrite the old one. So. Let's say you, you look at this r rm dash rf, uh, the zero directory. All right, so restore di zero directory. If we just run it as is, it will take out the old zero file. It will take out this old zero file and copy this thing over here. So that is what it will do. And yep, if we if we do that, uh, then it's really restoring from this zero dot original back here. And uh, if you note, uh, the way they do their all run file is slightly different than what we do, uh, what we have been doing anyway. So, um, you look at this, it says run application block mesh, run application potential foam. Instead of just uh, typing out block mesh, then you, you use this, uh, I mean, 
we normally do this block mesh and then we do a block mesh dot lock all right so this is the alternative way of uh, running uh, writing a script all right so we use the applications that are already available and what that what that does okay I'm gonna quit all what that does is that it already generates the log files for us so we don't need to you know, type in the uh, the lock so to speak so if you write if you're gonna do the all clean I'm doing the all clean now so it, see it, re it removes the zero directory as was earlier explained and then we do all run so this is me running the all run in the background so you see uh, it will tell you instead of giving you like a there's no printing out of where the thing is um, it'll tell you what it's doing so it first restores the zero from zero original that's the restore zero directory command and then it'll tell you that it, oh, now we are running block mesh on this uh, cylinder potential form right so now after that it'll say oh now we are running potential form so the, the difference between um, between the the files that we are doing I mean the way we wrote scripts and the way they wrote scripts uh, in, the, in the original tutorial file I mean this is the extra perk that comes out because it will it will print out what the where the where they are in the process so see now now it's done and then it, it does automatically log it down and then it gives us this uh, running it'll give us where 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 it is in the status so this is just uh, seeing how the original file was so uh, so that we can actually write uh, you know better scripts and you know run potential for so that's all I have uh, for now if not we get the videos running too long I'll continue this discussion in the next video thanks for watching and hit that like button if you really like this video. Thank you very much.